The introduction of the tariff to travel on the National Highway brought harsh debates to the Assembly Hall today, with the Prime Minister declaring that the Democrats are the ones imposing the tariff in a decision made back in 2010. At around noon today, the Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Kotsias arrived in Tirana, received by Foreign Minister Dimir Bouchati at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The pair analysed the progress made so far this year. The opposition declared today that six members of the City Council do not hold a valid mandate and therefore would they would abstain from many of the decisions to be proposed today. Good evening, it's 6 o'clock on Thursday the 29th of March 2018. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. From the Assembly podium, Prime Minister Eddie Rama called the objection to the nation's road tariff a debate without logic and a perverted patriotism. Rama said that the decision to impose the tariff was made back in 2010 when the Democrats ruled the country. This project began way back in 2010, exclaimed the Prime Minister. The statements from the Prime Minister were accepted as truth by the opposition leader, Lul Zimbasha, though he did advise that their plan had foreseen assistance packages for alleviating the pressure on citizens. However, former Prime Minister Sali Berisha held a different view, instead stating that although the tariff was discussed, the government at that time did in fact withdraw from the idea. We withdrew from charging travellers following the feasibility studies, said Sali Berisha. Rama said that the government will be providing concessions for residents who constantly use the road. This debate is without logic as the budget simply cannot afford the costs of maintaining this road. Nor should it be the responsibility of every taxpaying citizen. Only those who use the road should pay for it, added Eddie Rama. Remove the circulation tax, otherwise you will face protests, said Lul Zimbasha. In the debate, Rama mentioned to the opposition leader the allegations of corruptions for the time the nation's road was being built, which was also a time when Basha held the post of the Minister of Transport. From the Assembly podium, the SMI Chair, Monika Kruamavi, also issued strong accusations against the government. The objection of the new tariff on the nation's road has united all sides of politics and all members of the Caucus Municipal Council. At a special meeting, they decided to join a peaceful protest announced for Saturday to the cashier booths where the fee is to be paid. They will ask the government to remove the required payment, which they consider unfair and with negative effects for all, not only the residents of Kukas. A meeting was held today by the Kukas Municipal Council, where it was unanimously agreed to organise a peaceful protest on Saturday at 11 o'clock at the Joyce located on the nation's road due to the imposition of the tax. By treating it as a very sensitive issue for our region, we feel it is an obligation to gather all political forces without distinction and to organise a very peaceful protest. To urge the government to find a solution for our region, said the chair of the Kukas Municipal Council. Even the Municipal Council of Hasi and Tropoya have decided to request from the government and the Assembly the cancellation of this tax, as well as to hold peaceful protests. The meeting between the Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Kotsias and the Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs Didmu Bouchati lasted for about three hours today in Tirana. The Greek head diplomat arrived in Tirana at noon under the framework of a short visit to Tirana. At 12.16, the Greek Foreign Minister was received by Minister Bouchati at the Foreign Ministry premises. In a media announcement, the press office of the ministry informed that the two ministers reviewed progress made since the January meeting held in Korcha, which has materialised a number of positive developments already made public by the parties. Bouchati and Kotsias agreed on further steps to be taken in the coming months in order to advance the process and find solutions to issues still under discussion. The two ministers are thought to have paid special attention to the ongoing work on finalising the strategic partnership document in accordance with the will of the parties to strengthen the European dimension of Albanian-Greek relations. Delays in issuing the authorization by President Meta postponed the visit of Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras in Tirana, which was anticipated for April. After visiting Tirana, Kotsias flew to Vienna, where on Friday he will meet with his Macedonian counterpart and the UN negotiator tasked with the responsibility of mediation over issues relating to the name of the former Yugoslav Republic. President Ilir Meta accepted the credential letters from the new ambassador of the Kingdom of Denmark to our country, Lisolette Plesna.
Emphasising the very good relations between the two countries, the President expressed gratitude for the support that Denmark has given Albania over the three decades in the development of democracy and institutions. President Meta also praised Denmark's role and support for Albania's European integration process and the continuation of the enlargement process with the Western Balkan countries. Regarding the increase of economic cooperation, President Meta stressed that the establishment of direct flights in the summer period between Copenhagen and Tirana will have a direct impact on increasing cooperation in the fields of tourism and also the direct contacts between the Albanians and the Danes. The leaders of the Interior Ministry have undergone important changes where a woman was appointed as the Chief Surveyor of Police of Albania. Anila Trimi has been appointed the General Director of Service for International Internal Affairs and Complaints in the Interior Ministry. Since September last year, Trimi held the position of Secretary General at the Interior Ministry, a post that has now been taken over by Dritan Palnikai. The latter was appointed Secretary General of the Ministry of Interior, while during this time he was the Councillor of Minister Jafai and Prime Minister Rama. Appointments hold the date of 29 March. Before taking office as Secretary to the Interior Ministry, Trimi has been the General Director of the Anti-Trafficking and Asylum Directorate in the Interior Ministry, while in the period June 2006 to May 2015, she has worked in the Sector Against Illegal Trafficking, in the Directorate Against Organised Crime in the State Police. She has participated in joint investigations with, Germany, uh, with the German, Swiss and Italian authorities, while earlier she has a long history of experience, mainly in the treatment of trafficking victims. Trimi graduated from the Police Academy, as well from the Law Faculty in Tirana, and after her postgraduate studies, she has conducted a number of qualification courses. With her appointment to this post, the debate between the Democratic Party and the Interior Ministry ends, where the cause was Mr. Agim Husi, who was commanded for several months in this assignment. Trimi's primary task will now be the vetting of the police troop and cleaning of its ranks of incriminated elements. After the flood, the residents of the sub Shkodra area are facing the consequences. They are evidencing the damages from the water and are cleaning that which is still left behind. Residents seek to intervene and disinfect the area as the pollution is high, given the floodwaters contained a mix of sewerage and water. Residents are assessing the damage, but they have little hope for compensation. The firefighting service is helping to remove water and mud through large suction pumps. Throughout the district of, Sh of Shkodra, the surface underwater is about 3,670 hectares and about 400 houses are surrounded by water. The Shirt Darajat road is blocked, while the Belai Rashkulai access is passable only by vehicles with heavy tonnage. In these areas, schools have resumed as normal, however, water supply systems have been disconnected. At the beginning of the Municipal Council meeting today, the opposition warned that they would participate only to the extent of voting on those drafts which have already been discussed and are ready for approval. The decisions regarding economic assistance, subsidies and soft loans were specifically mentioned as approved topics for voting. They went on to explain that they would not be present for any further debates or discussions on the grounds that they believe six people present as part of the City Council did not in fact have an actual mandate as they have never been elected. The situation that the opposition speaks of has arisen as a result of the Administrative Court of Tirana terminating the mandate of six members who were elected in 2017, with their replacements being provided with positions without being voted in. Mayor Valiai arrived following the declarations by the opposition and chose not to comment on the position they had taken, instead proceeding to present all 23 agenda items, using actions to express his position rather than words. The second phase of soft loans is expected to see 400 beneficiaries, while the proposal to create three new suburban centres in Tirana to liven up the outer suburbs of the city sparked some debate. Three new suburban centres in the areas of Frescu, the Dry Lake and Astir announced for Liai. When it came time to vote, the DP and SMI councillors voted on the first nine draft decisions, which were social packages, while they said all other decisions will need to be taken to court because the voting is legally invalid. The majority adopted the 14 other draft decisions alone as their members total more than the required number of votes to pass the bills. 
And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.